last class we were discussing about uh, uh, working principle of the Larkin amplifier and uh, Larkin amplifier is used uh, mainly to remove the uh, uh, noise and also it is used to separate out in phase and out of phase components. So, we had shown uh, in the previous lecture that how the noise is removed uh, by means of averaging. So, we had shown that you know we, ha we can have uh, uh, switches you know the with the use of four switches we had shown how to uh, remove the uh, noise which is actually uh, uh, signal which is buried in the noise. So, we had shown last time that we had the these switches uh, So, we have this switches S1, S2, S3 and S4. So, we have the reference amplifier here. So, when the signal here uh, going positive and negative. So, when the signal is uh, positive here, when the signal is positive, uh, you want the output to be positive. Then at that time switch on S3, switch off S4. So, that whatever uh, signal is coming it comes here. At that time we switch on S2. So, at positive uh, when the uh, when this signal is positive uh, S2 on S1 off and then uh, S3 on and uh, S4 off. So, the positive signal appears as it is and then uh, we do the reverse of this when the signal is negative when the signal input is uh, negative then we want uh, whatever signal that is coming here that is to be applied here and uh, inverted and is put here. So, that inverted become again positive for that we uh, switch on S1 uh, we make S1 on S2 off S3 off S4 on. So, so, the minus voltage whatever is coming here that appears here and uh, it is getting uh, inverted and the inert voltage become again positive at the output. So, you will get uh, uh, signal like this. If noise is there, noise which is positive or negative uh, whatever was there at that time that appears as it is because this, these switches are actually they are not like diode they allow both signal positive as well as negative uh, values together. But we are operating uh, uh, this we are allowing the signal to go when the signal is minus at that time whatever signal the noise is there which is positive or negative that also comes and uh, appearing at the output. So, because of that you will get the output which contains uh, typically signal which are actually always put at uh, positive side and the noise whatever was there which may be positive or negative. So, that is how it appears at the output and net result is if the output is filtered then that will have only the DC voltage proportional to noise. So, V DC is proportional to noise and this is the time constant we had uh, uh, select such that time constant of this RC time constant much larger than the uh, noise frequency that we are encountering probably the lowest noise frequency. Uh, 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 noise frequency will be compared with this RC time constant. So, uh, by means of averaging, uh, the by means of averaging, averaging noise is removed. Uh, for this to be effective, for this to be effective um, we need uh, R c time constant R c time constant constant much larger than much larger than lowest noise lowest noise frequency.
So, this is how the lock in interview works. Let us see before uh, uh, getting into the actual uh, lock in uh, design, we will see what is the other use of the lock in amplifier. Other use of the lock in amplifier is separating out the in phase and out of phase uh, component. Uh, that is required at uh, many places because uh, in phase and out of phase component get mixed up if you have for example, resistance and capacitor together or uh, inductor and uh, resistance together or uh, both R, uh, L, C, R uh, combined also can have uh, uh, in phase and out of phase component mixed together. So, it is essential to separate out uh, for example, R and C in R C circuit that is what is the value of uh, resistance, what is the value of capacitance can be separately for, uh, find out using the lock in uh, uh, principle. So, let us see what is the basic concept involved in uh, uh, separating out the uh, in phase and out of phase component. So, lock in amplifier to separate out separate out in phase and out of phase components. Now, uh, because uh, if I have for example, uh, uh, AC source and then if you have uh, RC circuit for example, I can have R and then C. Now, if I look at the uh, uh, current through this, this current and this voltage. So, the voltage uh, at this point and then the current through this, they will have a phase shift. If it had been a pure resistance, then the current and voltage would have been in phase. Now, there will be a phase shift between this uh, current and this voltage. In this case, current would be leading and the voltage will be uh, lacking actually. So, you will have uh, uh, the, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the vo this is voltage at 0, we will have current uh, uh, leading. So, we will have already uh, the current actually leading and the current reaches maximum. Uh, at this point you have for example, in 90 degree uh, comments you will have this and then this actually uh, uh, the peak occurs nearly at 0 point. So, you have a, a phase shift of course, the phase shift need not be 90 degree. So, here the current leads current uh, leads leads the uh, voltage. Now, if we want to measure the capacitor and resistance separately then I should it is possible to separate out the uh, uh, in phase and out of phase comments. This I can uh, reconstruct this by superimposing two uh, ways that is uh, the resistance gives you in phase component which is in phase with the voltage and then the capacitor gives me uh, uh, the ca capacitor gives me the current which is 90 degree this is the current due to uh, resistance this is current due to resistance. The capacitor current will be leading 90 degree. So, you will have a, uh, at this point the uh, uh, redraw the. So, you will have a resistance component gives this kind of current this is uh, R and then the capacitor part actually will have a uh, leading amplitude. So, current would be uh, maximum here um, and then it comes back to 0 in case of and then at 0 it goes minus uh, maximum and again at peak it become comes to 0. So, you will have this is actually due to uh, current current due to capacitance this is current due to resistance. We can uh, superimpose this and get the uh, resultant waveform, resultant uh, current waveform that is what happens. So, one if I can uh, separate out the uh, uh, in phase and out of phase component then it is possible to measure the resistance and capacitance uh, uh, separately. For example, we had discussed earlier about the use of ratio transformer bridge. So, wherein we had a 
transformer like this and then we had uh, secondary with the uh, tapping and then if the capacitor to be measured we put the capacitor here and then we connected the detector here. This I had explained to you earlier that how this avoids various stray capacitances. Now we see uh, uh, how the lock in amplifier can be effectively used uh, in this case. So, this is a ratio transformer bridge. Uh, the ratio transformer uh, bridge uh, for capacitance measurement. Now, um, assume that this uh, in an actual balancing we will say for example, this is a uh, unknown capacitor C sample and this is a known capacitor C. Then we have this uh, uh, V s here and then uh, uh, v the voltage that is the with respect to ground what is the voltage here and the what is the voltage here. Actual working principle is that uh, uh, the voltage uh, this V actually drives the current like this. Uh, this V s actually drives the current uh, to the detector like this and the V drives the opposite current uh, in the reverse direction. If these two currents you know current given by this and the current given by this are equal then you will get a null uh, at the detector. So, by knowing V by V s one can find the ratio of the um, uh, actual uh, uh, balancing point that is uh, the current through C s will be given by uh, uh, V s uh, the current through C s is given by V s into uh, C s omega and that should be equal to V into uh, C omega should be given. So, that comes out uh, C s uh, C s by C comes out to be um, V by V s. So, the uh, we once so once I know uh, if I know C the known value or the C is this is known value if I know the value of uh, C and V s is and V is known. So, C is known in this case uh, C is known and V and V s is known. So, C s can be determined. Now, uh, for the, in this case a simple detector will do, but uh, unfortunately in uh, real life these capacitors may not be um, ideal capacitors, the capacitors may have its own resistance. So, let us see the real life situation that we have a uh, AC voltage uh, applied here and then we get the ratio transformer is a center tap then you have this resistance assume that uh, this is having a resistance here. Then we will have uh, another uh, component and this resistance also to be uh, uh, introduced. Now, if this is a sample and then this is R s and this is C and then this is uh, 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 R. Now, the detector will balance the detector current, detector current, current is due to both R and C, due to both R and C. Uh, now, the it will balance only both resistive component and the capacity component equally balances out. Now, that would be difficult because if you see that you know if I vary the this one it varies both uh, this voltage for example, if I have V s and V. So, if I vary the center tap then V s uh, uh, changes V also changes, but then it can balance only one component that is either C or R not both. So, if I uh, have a detector assume that if I have a detector which detects only uh, in phase component in phase with applied voltage for example, if I, this is the applied voltage if I have a detector which is sensitive to detect only the component which is in phase with this then uh, at that time I can balance only R by varying this I can balance R. Suppose I keep this detector which is sensitive to a 90 degree out of phase assume that detects only a 90 degree out of phase component with respect to the applied signal. Then 
I can balance uh, C uh, capacitance by adjusting this. So, one can balance separately uh, R s and uh, R in this case if assume that R s the leakage uh, the centrage in R s and R are very high if it is very small then we will have other set of problem and uh, we have to modify this one. There are uh, resistor transfer bridges called double resistor transfer bridge and so on, uh, but we will not get into this here we assume R s and R are very large but still it is a considerable amount when capacitors are very small. So, uh, under this assumption let us see how the locking amplifier can be utilized here to balance the bridge that is to separate out in phase and out of phase components. So, assuming, assuming R s and R is large is large. Uh, we can balance the bridge, we can balance the bridge bridge for, uh, 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 for resistance resistance and capacitance separately. Now, uh, first to balance resistance, to balance resistance, uh, make make D sensitive to sensitive to in phase component. There is an in phase compared to the applied voltage in phase uh, compared to the compared to the applied voltage that is uh, V s R V. Similarly to balance the capacitance to balance the capacitance to balance the capacitance make D make D sense uh, to sense to the 90 degree out of phase component out of phase component. So, uh, then one can balance out resistance and capacitance separately. So, if I keep this one uh, sense to 90 degree out of phase component with respect to the V s uh, r with respect to the input voltage then uh, uh, the, this I can uh, vary the uh, uh, center tap to balance uh, capacity alone it will ignore the resistance part resistance part play very less role because this detector is not sensitive to in, in phase component. So, for example, you, you pay one vessel capacitance and make it sensitive to out of phase uh, 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 component and then vary this. So, you will get a, a capacity method then make this uh, D sensitive to in phase component now balance and get the uh, resistance value. So, uh, this uh, this detector now it becomes a, a basically lock in amplifier this detector can be a uh, lock in amplifier. So, uh, let us see how to make it sensitive for in phase and out of phase component the D, D is uh, the detector T is now director D is now lock in amplifier. So, let us see how the lock in amplifier is sensitive to in phase and out of phase comment. So, how uh, lock in amplifier is sensitive to, to 90 degree phase comment. Now, this can be achieved in the following manner like we have seen the switches now I take a simple uh, case that I have a signal source here then you have the switch here and then assume that we had uh, input here assume that I have put the source here connect the signal at the output. Now, we have to operate this switch 
Now, assume that I, uh, uh, I put here the analog switch or uh, 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 assume that this analog switch and then I get give a gate signal to this to make it up, uh, on or off. For example, if I apply a gate voltage, assume it is on and it, it is off when the gate voltage is uh, uh, 0. So, if the input signal and the gate signal, suppose if I have a input signal like this, then let me have a phase shifter here. Let me have a phase shifter here, which is 90 degree phase shifter. So, basically 90 degree phase shifter I have and then I take the output. So, this will be the input signal here and the output here will be 90 degree uh, phase shifted. That means, when it is 0, it is actually high, uh, uh, sorry, when it is 0, Uh, the input uh, is high and then when it is high, uh, okay, I will put the points here. So, you get, uh, so we uh, start here and then it becomes, uh, uh, sorry, this uh, leading phase. So, we will have uh, signal um, 0 degree, you have 90 degree phase shift already then it uh, slowly comes back to uh, 0 degree you have to have 90 degree phase shift yes and then comes back to 0 here and goes back to minus 90 at this point comes to 0 again at this point. So, you will have a 90 degree phase shifted component coming uh, uh, at this point. So, you will have uh, the signal completed uh, like this. So, uh, output is phase shifted uh, at this point and then you get a phase shifted output. Now, what I do is I will you I will square this uh, waveform and offer to the switch actually. So, what I do is that I will have a signal, you will have a signal then I will give it to the switch. For example, I will put a, a bilateral fit switch, then uh, I will have the voltage here. Now, this I will have a 90 degree phase shifter, 90 degree phase shift. Then this I put a square, this which convert into a square wave. So, you will get a square wave which is 90 degree phase shifted compared to the sine wave. So, we will have the two ways if you see that is the input sine wave like this and then you will have the output which is actually uh, uh, phase shifted and uh, square. So, you will have uh, uh, we will have the uh, change occurs at this point. Then again uh, the waveform changes at this point. So, it is a 90 degree phase shifted uh, uh, wave. So, you will have uh, that is the voltage that you get 90 degree phase shifted phase shifted uh, square wave. This uh, 90 degree phase square wave is given to the switch. So, for example, if uh, then if I look at the voltage at this point, I will get uh, I will uh, I will be getting the sine wave like this. You know, because whenever it is on, the uh, output is uh, coming. So you will have the uh, voltage uh, comes like this. Then you get no uh, voltage. Then other half uh, assume that you know it is negative side. It is uh, uh, completely off. So, during the positive cycle that you will get the signal. So, in the other half you will not be having the signal. So, you will have a signal coming out like this at the output. So, if you see this uh, half the sine wave is uh, coming you know other half is uh, you know uh, this is uh, lost it is not there you know uh, the switch is not allowing the other half to come. So, you will have signal at this point uh, positive half half a positive 
and half of negative will be coming here. So, suppose if I put a, a RC network at this point, for example, I put on RC network at this point, then I will get a 0 volt, I will get a, a 0 volt. So, this is because uh, uh, this the whatever voltage that is supplied here 90 degree phase shifted and then we are switching. Uh, so, you will get uh, half the sine wave that is uh, you will get the voltage of this part for example, uh, in this case uh, I can show you separately now with the assume I have a sine wave like this then I have a square wave which is like this. then you will have. Now, if I, uh, if I operate this then I will get only this waveform alone is will be coming here. So, you will get the output from the switches uh, and that is what it uh, turns out. So, when it is averaged out the average value is 0. That means, now uh, the signal here uh, this and this are if the 90 degree out of phase. So, there is no, uh, so the output is actually 0. Suppose, if I make it without phase shift, for example, if I uh, without phase shift if I had switched, then the signal would have been like this uh, without phase shift, without phase shifter. then the signal would have been uh, like this and the square wave would have been like this. The next wave would have been like this. Then output of the after the if it passed the switch then you would have got the signal the positive half cycle and the negative is not coming again the positive half cycle would have come. Uh, average is not 0, average is not 0 that means, you would have got the signal. That means, if I make it you know uh, the switch, if I make the switch such that if this and this are uh, uh, in phase, if the input and this are in phase, then uh, I will get maximum voltage if uh, this input voltage and the gate voltage are uh, 90 degree phase shifted, then I will get a uh, 0 volt average value as a 0 volt. Now, using this one can separate out the in phase and out of phase uh, component because uh, if it is a capacitive uh, component then you would have got uh, some phase shift for example, in the uh, locking amplifier case that we had uh, both capacitor and resistance here. So, you have the here lock in amplifier is used. Now, we connect this. Now, uh, the lock in amplifier switches uh, we have discussed. Suppose, if I make sure that you know I take this as a input voltage, I take this voltage, assume this is grounded, I take this voltage and then I square it up, I put a square there, then I will get a signal uh, which is a square wave that is uh, in phase with the applied voltage. This square wave is in phase with applied voltage. Now, if I uh, lock in amplifier switches are switched using uh, this square wave that is in phase square wave. Now, the lock in will be sensitive only for the resistive component because uh, the resistive component uh, current will be flowing and lock in uh, 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 output uh, the uh, average output of the lock in amplifier uh, will not be 0 and then you will have a resistive component. Now, we know the capacitive current, but that is coming through this, uh, that is the capacitive current that is coming here is a 90 degree out of phase component, this current and this current both are opposite that this goes like this and this current goes like this. They are actually uh, opposite, but uh, this currents actually are 90 degree uh, out of phase. So, but we are switching that with the in phase signal. So, the 90 degree out of phase current would have uh, produced zero output. So, if I switch this for example, if the uh, uh, if uh, lock in amplifier 
amplifier is switched switched with the in phase component in phase uh, uh, square wave a square wave then only uh, resistance resistance uh, uh, current current will produce output will produce output uh, the capacitance uh, to the capacitance current capacitance current will not produce any output similarly if i shift i switch uh, I, I, if i introduce a phase shift 90 degree phase shift and switch then the capacitance component will be sensitive and resistance component will not be sensitive that is uh, what you can do is that you have a uh, Lucky uh, the ratio transformer. Now uh, you have this resistance and capacitance. Now what you do is you take this signal and have a 90 degree phase shift. Then I have a squarer. Then I switch this uh, to lock in amplifier. No, I, I switch the lock and fair with this uh, square squarer. Now, uh, if I do this, now resistance component uh, will not be sensitive. Only capacitor component will be sensitive. Now, lock in is lock in is sensitive only to only to uh, capacitors capacitor capacitor change change and not for recent change. Not for recent change. Okay, this is uh, important because of this one can separately balance out resistance and capacitance. That is make it first uh, introduce a 90 degree phase shift, introduce a uh, 90 degree phase shift then it is sensitive for capacitance. So, now I uh, adjust this and balance the capacitance, then I remove the anterior phase shifter, then I uh, balance it that balance is given for resistance. Of course, this works only when resistance value is very high, there are other issues involved when the resistance is not very high, when the resistance value is low then you have uh, other problems. So, as long as the resistance is high this works well. So, lock in amplifier uh, that way can remove both the uh, noise, uh, remove the noise as well as it is capable of separating out in phase and out of phase component. So, let us see how to design the lock in amplifier because now we had seen the theory that is uh, behind the lock in amplifier. Now, let us see how to design a lock in amplifier. So, obviously, the uh, we had have a uh, in uh, 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 sine wave as a input excitation that is required. So, we take uh, this uh, capacity measurement ratio transfer bridge only as in our uh, example and then design the lock in. So, um, what you do is uh, we will take the output of the uh, bridge that is the output of the deductor as an input to the lock in alpha. So, the obviously the input signal uh, we had to get is this, this input is given here. Then uh, this contains signal plus uh, noise and also we have, we have necessity to separate out the in phase and out of his comments. Then I will have um, obviously amplifier. So, that even the small signal is picked up. So, maybe I need a uh, few stages of amplification so that there is not much phase shift is involved. So, you will have a wide band uh, bandwidth amplifiers we have 
and we had uh, we had amplified the signal. Then the uh, if we take the bridge here that the bridge consists of the um, uh, primary and then the two secondaries. Uh, I think I write at this point, I write at the bottom. So, we will have the uh, Essentially, this is the input to this, and this is the excitation signal, and that is grounded. Now, what I do is I had to produce a phase shift and then the switching network. So, the switches can be a like, uh, lot we had earlier that we will have the amplifier put here. So, we have the switches S4. Now, we have generate a signal which is actually uh, 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 which is a, a either in phase with the input or 90 degree out of phase with the input. That input signal is now this, this is our reference signal, this is the uh, reference signal. Now, with respect to that, we have to switch them. Assume there is no uh, 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 assume there is no phase shift introduced in this, in this and in this. And if that is the case, what can be done is that I can take this for example, if I want to measure the in phase component, then uh, I can uh, take this, then square it off and give, but then I also want to have uh, 90 degree phase shifter component. So, I can have a phase shifter here which is 90 degree, 90 degree phase shifter input then uh, the output is here. Now, what I do is I can have a switch here which either selects uh, a in phase component or it selects uh, one of them 90 degree out of phase component. Then this uh, uh, okay, I will redraw this. That I can uh, select either uh, in phase or out of phase component. Take this output that is I, I, I have a reason to either to switch to this or switch to this. Then I take uh, this output, this output is uh, given to a square. The square can be a, a simple uh, comparator for example. So, uh, Whenever this is uh, 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 high, for example, uh, uh, this can be used to switch when uh, switch on. When it is low, it can be uh, used to switch off. So I can generate one more uh, signal, which is giving me uh, another uh, uh, phase reversal. So this I can give this and give uh, to the ground. So now we will have two square wave signals, both are one eight degree out of phase. So you'll have uh, square wave one and square wave 2 which are 1 degree out of phase that can be used to switch uh, uh, these 4 switches. For example, 1 can be given to uh, S1, if S1 is uh, on we want at the same time S4 also to be on and the 2 can be given to uh, H, uh, 2 can be given to uh, S3 when S3 on, we want S2 also should be on. So, uh, we can connect uh, this to the gates of this, that is the S, uh, this output can be given to gate of S1 and S4 and this output can be given to gate of S3 and 
uh, S2. So, if it is for example, uh, if I want to measure in phase component, if you want to measure in phase component, then I connect uh, um, this switch, for example, this switch I call it as uh, S. So, connect the switch S to position, say I will put the position actually uh, 1 here, 2. For in phase measurement, in phase measurement measurement connect in phase measurement connect connect s to point 2 now uh, when it is uh, in phase you will have uh, output here uh, positive. So, that will make uh, 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 this there is a small change here that I will make this this S 3 that is uh, if it is positive then S 3 to be on and then uh, S 2 should be on. So, when it is in phase component uh, when it comes uh, in phase then this will be uh, high during positive off cycle that will make S 3 on and S 2 on uh, and S uh, at that time this will be off. So, we will go to this one S 4 this is connected to S 4 and uh, S 1 uh, S 4. So, at that time uh, when say that is uh, S 3 and uh, S 2 will be on for in phase measurement then connect to point S 2 then uh, now S 3 and S 2 will be on S 3 and S 2 will be on that will produce a positive output. So, uh, output output P naught So, output V naught will be positive and of course, here S 4 comma S 1 off. That means, you will get in phase component now, because we have put at position 1 uh, that is uh, at point 2. So, you got in phase component and then switching is done for the incoming wave which is uh, uh, in phase. So, you will get output which is positive of cycles and uh, output is now sensitive for in phase component that is output is now sensitive for uh, resistance measurement. Now, for measure capacitance that is this measures uh, this measures the uh, resistance resistance that is it measures the in phase component. Now, to measure the capacitance to measure the capacitance connect uh, connect um, uh, switch S 2 position 1, connect switch S 2, switch S 2 to position 1. That is what you do is that we will now connect to uh, uh, position 1 here. So, the signal what you are getting here is 90 degree outer face. So, the square waves also will be 90 degree out of phase with respect to the uh, input uh, signal that is with respect to this. So, here whatever signal that is being switched whatever that is uh, uh, switched will be 90 degree out of phase with respect to incoming wave. So, the output now what you get will be say, uh, 90 degree phase shifted or it will be in phase per capacitance current. So, now it will be sensitive for capacitance current. 
was like a uh, now uh, now the bridge is sensitive for capacitor bridge is sensitive for capacitance So, the output of the locking amplifier uh, will be uh, will give only the capacitance component and we will have very simple average will get only capacitance component uh, and also it will be uh, removed of the noise. So, if you look at the output now we filter it filter it from the output of the uh, switching stage that you will get this output. So, uh, V x will be uh, uh, without noise and also it output can be selected for in phase or uh, out of phase. Now, this is the uh, uh, it is a very important instrument uh, as far as uh, signal processing is concerned uh, particularly when signal is buried in noise one can remove the noise and as well we can separate out in phase and out of phase component using the locking amplifier. Uh, so, using locking amplifier uh, lock in amplifier, the two things can be one separate out the in phase and out of phase component, separate out, out the in phase and out of phase component, to remove the noise move the noise from the signal. So, the uh, that is why the earlier days locking was uh, very popular even today locking on fair is very popular, but uh, this also can be done uh, digitally. For example, the uh, uh, before discussing the uh, other use of the locking and fair. I just give you the circuit diagram of the phase shifter so that uh, one can uh, willing to one can design the uh, full locking and fair series. So, for example, the phase shifter circuit can be like this. The phase shifter uh, circuit. The input. For example, equal regions are put, and for example, R filter and C filter. By varying either RF or uh, CF, one can vary the uh, phase shift. Uh, vary the vary the RF to produce to vary the phase shift. Vary the phase shift between input and output. Now, mm, this phase shift uh, this can give maximum of uh, 180 degree uh, phase shift. So, one can set uh, 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 whatever phase shift required in this stage for example, uh, you can select um, for 90 degree phase shift the resistance can be selected so that uh, and the capacitor can be set so that 90 degree uh, phase shift uh, appears at the output. So, for 90 degree phase shift for uh, 90 degree phase shift phase shift select select suitable R f and R f and C f. The phase shift of course, depends upon the uh, frequency and if more than 180 degree phase shift required the two stages uh, 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 can be uh, added together. So, one can have uh, normally uh, two stages of phase shift for example, you can have
which actually can give you maximum of 180 degree, 360 degree phase shift considering both the stages. So, one can get in between the input and output, the input and then the output you can have 180 degree phase shift is possible. Um, uh, maximum of maximum of uh, 360 degree 360 degree phase shift phase shift possible possible uh, considering both the stages. Each stage gives you an 8 degree out of phase. So, uh, uh, cons uh, considering both the stages. So, normally we need to have a uh, additional phase shift other than uh, the 90 degree phase shift that what we had shown here. We had shown only 90 degree phase shifter and addition to this uh, 90 degree phase shifter we had to have uh, additional phase shifter required to compensate the phase shift that occurred uh, in these stages because in actual uh, case there will be a phase shift here, there will be some phase shift here and there will be some phase shift here and simply by shifting 90 degree exactly you are not able to switch in phase and out of phase. So, in actual arcing amplifier we need to introduce uh, additional phase shifter uh, here in this stage uh, so that uh, one can have uh, uh, this phase shift will be equal to this so that one able to get in phase and out of phase component uh, uh, accurately. So, if you look at the uh, total locking amplifier it looks like this that you have a, a series of amplifiers at the input uh, you know if you have a voltage follower and then the amplifier uh, stages then you will have the switches which we had seen uh, earlier then you had uh, this so you have the plus minus the switches then uh, this input signal whatever was coming that uh, reference signal was the, the same reference signal was taken the reference voltage and that actually you will have a 90 degree phase shifter and degree phase shifter with the uh, provision for selecting in phase and out of phase component. Then this may need additional phase shifter phase shifter additional phase shifter and then the squarer squarer then inverter inverter that uh, the this inverted output is for two switches and this is for two switches. So, you have uh, S 1 S 2 S 3 uh, and then you have one more switch here S 4. So, this supposed to be given to S 1 means then S 1 is on then it also has to go to S 4 and then this has to go to S 3 and uh, S 2. So, one can uh, select the in phase and out of phase component by uh, one can say uh, this is 0 and 90 degree 0 and uh, 90 degree. So, one, if you want to measure in phase component then uh, select the uh, 0 degree uh, position and then uh, introduce a phase shift that phase shift will be equal to phase shift introduced by these amplifiers. So, you got at this point see uh, this uh, uh, sine wave which is in phase with the signal here. Now, you uh, square it up make it a square wave so that the switches are switched and then to produce a reverse square wave then invert it and then again get a square wave and uh, these outputs can be connected to these switches. Now, that uh, completes the uh, lock in amplifier design because I had already given you how the phase shifter to be made and how the square and inverter to be made. Uh, only thing is that these switches 
I have not discussed in detail. These switches are analog switches which is available for example, the uh, uh, typical uh, uh, switches are CD4016 which is an analog bilateral switch which allows both uh, 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 positive and negative uh, analog voltages to pass through. So, one can configure uh, this using a plus minus power supply. So, that these switches also uh, can be uh, working properly. So, uh, for uh, use analog switches for CD46, um, that will make the locking amplifier complete and then of course, the output should be connected through a uh, time constant this RC. The time constant must be selected larger the time constant uh, the better the noise rejection. So, one can have uh, various values of RC and if necessary this output also can be uh, 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 taken out using a voltage follower circuit. Now, in this locking amplifier of course, you are getting output voltage uh, uh, which is not uh, uh, sensitive to noise in the sense no, uh, signal which is buried in the noise can be extracted. Of course, the output voltage is only DC, the original signal is not uh, retained as it is. Of course, uh, we were able to separate out in phase and out of phase component and we able to remove the noise, but the original sine wave is uh, lost uh, uh, the output we do not get the original sine wave. There is another device which is called uh, boxcar integrator which was earlier days used which can even uh, give back the uh, uh, original signal wave shape. Uh, so, th that uh, issues we will discuss in the next class before uh, uh, getting into uh, other issues of AC amplifier. Uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.